deadliest man eaters to ever exist. Now, the only true real answer to this right here, the only true real answer is Jada Pinkett Smith. That's it. All right, anyways, let's get started. Let's start with the most horrifying man eaters on the list and slowly work our let's way go. towards the stuff of nightmares. Number eight, the spotted devil of Gamalapur. The what the hell is that? Bro, even a drawing stare, even a Number low eight, eight, the sp even a low quality drawing scared. I hope he shows real pictures. Spotted devil of Gamalapur. The spotted devil was the nickname given to one of the most feared leopards to have mm. ever lived. In the 1940s in the state of Tamil Nadu, India, the leopard would claim 250 miles of jungle as its personal hunting grounds. But mm. the reason this leopard was so feared oh, hell no. was for its proficiency Yo, what's up with, with, with her up head? Eat in hunting humans. Now, if this isn't terrifying enough, leopards are nocturnal hunters. So any attack that would be carried out would be in the darkness of night where you would never see it coming. And 42 Damn. people across multiple villages would meet this horrifying fate. The spotted devil became so feared that after a while, people in the villages began to barricade their doors Push after sunset and refused to step foot outside, including to use the restroom, causing oh a health God. crisis in many villages. And in its frustration, the leopard would begin to enter homes through windows, roofs, or by... So yeah, I couldn't live back then with these creatures alive. I, uh, at least we have guns now, like... If it does something, I'll show some American freedom and just pump that in the head. Any means necessary. Snatching people in the today. dead of night and dragging them into the forest to be devoured. It wouldn't be until the famous hunter Kenneth terrifying. Anderson was called for help that the leopard would finally be challenged. Anderson was a notorious hunter that specialized in hunting big game animals, especially just, just those animal? that hunted humans. It would take him three nights to finally come face to face with the cat where he would be woken up in the middle of the night by a stray dog that he befriended that night when mm. it began to violently shake with uncontrollable fear. And when Anderson looked up at the roof, he would catch a glimpse of the devil before losing it in the darkness. Oh, he hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. No. Absolutely not. Bro, what? That sounds straight out of a horror movie. It sounds like you're playing Finance at Freddy's or some shit. You see it at first, you see, that's just, that's the scariest sight imagine that you see what this red eyes, red eyes for a second then instantly disappears. Jump scare incoming. He then began to actively search for the cat. And after a few minutes had gone by, he would be alerted by a bark uh, from the straight ugly dog, ass dog, causing Anderson to quickly turn around and seeing the leopard charging straight at him. And in that instant, he managed to let off oh, three over. shots from his 405 caliber Winchester, showed us some American killing freedom. the cat in its tracks. That's what I'm talking about. After examining the body, Anderson would discover porcupine quails lodged between the toes of the leopard's foot, an injury that prevented it from hunting its natural prey, resulting the animal to turn to human flesh. Man. I don't care. Fuck it. As for the stray dog that Anderson befriended during that hunt, he would actually go on pack? to adopt him. Number seven, the tigers of Wait, what? Oh, he adopted the dog? Wait, it's kind of a wholesome story. He would actually story. go on to adopt him. Nah, this is like actually like you can tell he's he's a hunter. Number American seven, hunter. the Tigers of Chowgur. This was a pair of Bengal tigers consisting of an old tigress and her young adult cub, which over the course of five years Good managed Jeff to Palmer. accumulate 64 confirmed kills. This all took place in the Kumal division in India from 1925 mm -hmm. through 1930. Oh, it's not the as pair long of tigers would turn a 1,500 square mile mountain region into their own personal hunting grounds. This terrain would include multiple villages which they actively hunted. They would alternate attacks from village to village. Well, my question is, bro, was they stupid? Like, if you, why are you building your village on the top of this creature's hunting ground? How dumb were they? I'm confused. Why is everything happening in India, damn? Nah, India got like a crazy amount of wild animals. Like, animals As this different. tactic allowed them to catch the villagers off guard. And after three years of pure hell, the locals began to reach out and animals seek the help of Jim Corbett. Jim Corbett was an Indian-born British hunter who specialized mm. in hunting man-eating tigers and leopards. But to catch this pair of tigers, it would take Corbett three separate hunting trips that spanned over a period of two years. Eventually, on his third trip on the 19th day, he would finally come face to face with a pair Build of tigers. wall, idiots. <laughs> 
walls. I mean, they were in a they were in village time, so they probably didn't have the facilities tigers. for that. He headed to the small village of Kala Agar, which was the last place the tigers were known to be. There, he began to hang buffalo meat as bait in the hopes that it would lure out the cats. While on post, Corbett would be alerted by a companion that they had heard. Holy the hell! Who was this companion? The the Notre the Hunter Hunter back of Notre Dame. Who is this? Dude, I understand your your the point of your channel is drawing these low quality drawings, but god damn, you don't have to do this man like that lions nearby Thousand and before Trump? he knew it he would turn a corner and catch himself standing right in front of the tigress at a distance of eight feet she was awesome. sitting next to a large boulder when corbett would Go take master. the shot killing her and putting an end to the attacks he would then kill the young adult cub shortly after oh yeah deserved it upon first that that was further investigation he would then kill yeah, the young adult cub it. shortly after Upon further investigation, he would discover that the tiger's claws and canine teeth were broken and her front teeth completely worn down, causing her to turn to humans as her primary source of food. Number six. I don't know if that's supposed to make me feel bad for them, but I, I don't care. <laughs> I literally don't care. Osama the crocodile. This was the terror. Terrifying crocodile. I thought that he was about to say terrorist. Why don't I think he was about to say terrorist? Lived on Lake Victoria. I need to see. Okay, I need to see these creatures. Let me search up Osama the crocodile because he's not showing the actual images. Bro, that's a truck. Y'all see this? That is a truck. I feel bad. I don't. The hell, bro? They let this thing loose. It is not hesitant. You think it's gonna feel bad or oh, feel bad? You think it's gonna feel bad mauling all the people here? Hell no. Nah. Pacto. Victoria in Africa Freaky from shit. the years 1991 through 2005. It is believed that this one crocodile has. Oh yeah, so it is recent. In over 83 people, it is it's recent. very difficult to confirm pictures. these numbers since the crocodile would oftentimes attack people that were fishing alone, and of course would consume them whole. This, to the go this goes to show fishing is a stupid hobby. I will hold that notion. There have been multiple instances where pieces of clothing would wash ashore from someone who had recently went missing. But sadly, ripped pieces of clothing were not the only thing to wash Fishing ashore. Sucks. Sometimes an arm or a leg would too. The locals have even reported seeing children dragged from shore after mm. attempting to fill their buckets. But the horrifying nightmare doesn't stop there. The crocodile would even develop the skill of capsizing boats by slamming the boat from underneath, sending the fishermen flying into the water, becoming easy lunch. Oh this crocodile God. was such a menace that he would oftentimes just launch himself vertically out of the water and belly It has to learn that through evolution. It has to learn to do those specific type of actions. Flopping directly onto people's boat. Like this thing was just meant to kill humans. There was no other function for it. It was just meant to kill humans. I refuse to believe it was meant to hunt other things. Clamping onto fishermen's legs croc. and dragging them into the water. And out of all the people this crocodile attacked, only 15 of them would survive to tell the tale. But thankfully, yeah, in 2005, the crocodile would finally be. Oh, that's caught, the image we saw. Where he was. Oh, wait, it was one? That was one? Pure evil. I'll solo him, no diff. I thought it was like multiple. You know, these things were just meant to kill humans. Then killed and made into Bro, luxury handbags. Number five The Man Eating Leopard of Rudder Priyag. The first attack came in 1918 in Benji village in the Rudra Priyag district of India. This would mark the start of a bloody and gruesome killing spree that would last eight long years, leaving 125 people dead. During oh, that's this actually serial killer numbers. time period, very few people would even dare to step outside of their homes after sunset, fearing that the leopard would be waiting for them outside, as he often would, since he preferred the taste of human flesh over anything else numbers? and when people stopped going outside the leopard began to adapt he would begin to break down doors leap through windows and even come in from the roof oh no 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 bro that is my scariest fear ever my scariest fear is something falling on the top of my head like some type of animal or something coming from my toilet those are my two scariest fears like in my home something's just gonna crash down a spider's gonna land on my head or a snake's gonna crawl up my asshole from like the toilet like have y'all ever seen the video of this hold up snake falls from roof <laughs> wait look at this son. that is ridiculous man ridiculous and by the way what's stopping this from happening to you yeah you it could be above your roof right now it could be above, it could be rats it could be anything
or made from plants. This is in Florida. And once inside, he would grab the person know, and drag them out to the too. dark forest where he would devour them. After hundreds of people Please. met this fate, units of Gurkha and British soldiers were sent. Come on, bro. What are we doing here? What's up with his face? Why? Why? And to track the animal down, but failed miserably. The British government even offered a handsome reward Brits to anyone who could manage to kill the cat. And many well-known and famous hunters stepped up. I would have been out there, goddamn! I would have been out there. The task. And failed Put a as bounty well. Like one piece on it. But on the 2nd of May, 1926, the legendary hunter Jim Corbett would personally take this task on oh for God. himself. Jim is just a goat. This would lead him on a 10 week hunt through the jungle where he would track the cat down and shooting it dead, Ooh. completing a task that many thought Jim was impossible. Again. And after examining this the body, Corbett would KD. discover that there was nothing inherently wrong with the cat. Well, nothing that would prevent it from hunting its regular prey since it did have some bullet wounds from hunters who had recently Here missed its vital ready. organs. But other than that, it was fine. Corbett came to the conclusion that the cat had developed a taste for human flesh when it was still very young. You see, a cholera outbreak occurred years prior, and many people who died from the disease would be taken to grave sites where they were left unburied. And to a young cat, this would have been easy food. But when the disease inevitably slowed down, the bodies did too, causing the cat's food supply to dwindle down. So now, yeah, naturally, the cat began to hunt and consume the food that it had. That's all isn't that how it happens for serial killers too? Like for serial killers, when they're young, they when, when they're young, like they kill animals and stuff like that, and then they end up growing up craving them. Okay, it's not really, or I said craving, killing humans, but it's kind of not really the same thing. Like different scenarios, but it kind of can be applied here. I don't know. Always eaten. Number kinda four, the cold. man eating lions of Savo. If there was any man-eating animal on the list that you might have heard of, this would probably be the one. The Sabo mm. man-eaters were a pair of male lions of in the Sabo region of animals. Kenya. These lions would target construction workers who were working on the Uganda and Kenya railway between March and uh, December. That's like the worst thing too. You get killed. Like that's you're working a blue-collar job. You're doing hard labor all day, and then at the end of the day, you just end up getting killed by a line on on, on the work line. September of terrible. 1898. The pair of lions would stalk the campsites and strike in the dead of night by grabbing workers from their tents and dragging them out to devour them. It's said that anywhere from 28 to 138 people met this oh fate, God. around 30 Indian workers and an unknown amount of native African workers. For Damn. some reason, no one kept records of the African workers. And they're, 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 in a, they're, they're in a working camp too, honestly. That's just terrible. That went missing. That's why there's such Attacks an enormous even. disparity in the fatality count. And when the attacks first began, only one of the lions would enter the camp at night, taking one victim to be split among the pair. But as time went on, the pair of lions would become oh, a lot no, more I hate bold, that. I hate seeing with that. both of them going into camps and Ugh, each of them claiming gross. a victim for themselves. These attacks would be point. carried out on an almost daily basis, with all the workers personally knowing someone who had went missing. It wouldn't be until hundreds of workers abandoned the job site, which caused the entire project to come to a complete stop. I would have done the same thing too. What the hell? If I find out one of my coworkers, let alone multiple of them got killed by man eating lions, I'm out that shit. I am quitting. The officials were finally forced to find a solution, sending in around 20 Indians. So that's the, no, that's the only way. Like, like they knew about that shit, but they didn't care until the workers decided to leave. That's so messed up. <laughs> Wait, that's so messed up. In <sighs> soldiers. Look at this team of goose right here. Did this team of goose do it? Take it down. To hunt the pair of lions down, where they would go on to completely ship. fail. But on December 9th, 1898, Colonel John Henry Patterson would catch one of these lions approaching camp. He would go on to tag it with a high caliber rifle on the back leg and scaring it off, just for it to return back the same night, where Patterson would tag it once more, piercing its heart. Uh, the dead. second lion, on the other hand, was an absolute tank. He managed to survive getting shot that, nine times with three different guns across an 11 day period. Oh and it God. wouldn't be until Colonel Patterson I yet he edited the ray gun there. again placed the final shot on its head that the lion would finally be stopped. Damn. Today, these lions are proudly displayed Bro, at the, the Field gun? Museum in Chicago. Number three, Gustav. Gustav is a. <laughs> Gustav? Nah, let me find out I'm dying to to, to a man-eating animal named Gustav. Get out of here, man. Get out of here.
A Come large on, museum in Chicago. Number three. Gustavo Chicken. Gu Gustav. Oh no. Nah. Gustav is a large Nile crocodile. He don't buy y'all. His name is Gustav. Like hell from Burundi, Africa. He's good. He's good. He is rumored to have killed anywhere from 200 to 300 people on the banks of the Rusizi River and in the connecting lake of Tanganyika. All the locals. How do they even track that? That's my question. 200 to 300 people. How do they even track that? Burundi claimed to. What if it's like different? An well, I guess you know it could be one animal, but know someone that has been taken by gustav or someone who has simply vanished without a trace a few locals have even been attacked by him and were lucky enough to live to tell the tale their bodies mm. left covered in scars from the encounter yeah, i don't even want to live after that like i forgot what it was y'all remember the story about the lady who got attacked by the monkey and then her face is completely mauled like it completely got mauled i'm glad she survived like but jesus like her face that's there for life but here's the terrifying part today. not only is gustav a man-eater who takes every opportunity he can to devour humans he is also a not a typical size a for a nile costume. crocodile in fact, in fact he is much much bigger being the largest nile crocodile to have ever been recorded hmm. here's an image of your average size nile crocodile oh, and here is gustav oh no nah, that's like three of them together he kind of looked chill though. Like, am I wrong? Like, look at him. He's kind of just like sitting there. Like, I don't know. Some of them got their mouths open. He seems kind of chill. These ones got their mouths open. They seem like they're chatting. He's just sitting in the corner. Scientists have speculated that his unusually Solid large chub. size prevents him from hunting his regular prey. So he had to resort to other means. Gustav is easily identified by the scars across his body. The scars mm. that were left after being shot multiple times with an AK-47. After multiple attempts on his life, the locals are now convinced that his hide is so thick that it actually makes him bulletproof. To this day, there have been multiple attempts to capture him, but have all ended in failure. Yeah, and as far yeah. as we know, he still roams the river to this day. Number two. I won't be visiting wherever that is. What is this image? I would not be visiting there to this day. Yeah, y'all stay safe. Hey, Gustav is coming for you. Stay safe. The Pinar Maneater. The Pinar Maneater was a male leopard who yeah, was responsible for over 400 fatal attacks, which were all carried out in the darkness of night. This leopard single-handedly terrorized the villagers in the Pinar region in Almora district of India. That's a big ass. Like, y'all realize how big India is? That's 1 billion people. That means in this region right here, there's probably like 100 million people or something. I'm assuming. During the early 20th century, this years would go Gustav. by with the leopard having his way and picking villagers off with ease. The locals, gripped with fear, refused to even step outside of their homes after sunset. I wouldn't the either. leopard would eventually adapt to this and began to snatch the villagers from inside of their homes, Ooh. dragging them into the jungle to devour Ooh, the them. House. The leopard was so efficient in hunting humans that the government eventually had to step in and offer some assistance, the best way that they knew how. They called upon Jim Corbett, the legendary hunter who had a reputation for killing man-eaters, as we already covered some of his stories on this list. But to kill this elusive animal, it would take Corbett multiple Jim, hunting trips before he would ever even get a glimpse of the cat. Corbett would travel for days on foot through the dense Indian forest to reach an area where the leopard was known to hunt. And on his journey, he would even contract malaria. And that was still not enough to stop him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> not to stop him, Jim. Not to stop him, Jim. Once he finally reached the village where the leopard was last seen, he would set up a base on top of a tree, but not before tying up That's a small camping. goat 30 yards away to hopefully lure out the cat. Hours would go by Is while he waited at his post, and as it began to get dark, the birds would be the first to give him a sign, as they would begin to act out in complete fear. And soon after, he began to hear something brushing against the bushes right next to him, and all he could do was sit and wait. Oh. And this would go on for a few minutes. Oh, I thought he, I thought but back. eventually, I thought whatever was in the bushes slowly goat. worked its way towards the small goat and killing it. And in the complete darkness, Corbett oh, yeah, was forced to guess where the monster could be, taking a shot towards the direction of the goat, followed by an angry grunt. And for a second, the scenery lit up from the shot, seeing the cat falling backwards and hearing it run back into the forest. The villagers were persistent and convinced Corbett to track the animal down that night Damn. instead of waiting for the morning like he wanted. He told them okay. that the only way he would do it is if they promised to hold their ground if they came across the beast, as they would be the only source of light that he would have. They agreed and- Wait, them? So they're sacrificing themselves? 
and promised they would then ask villagers <laughs> begin to track the blood trail left from oh the yeah see no i couldn't do this absolutely not absolutely not i don't care if i'm the leader of the village I i'm i'm the man leader of the village i, I don't care i'm not doing it cat, not doing following it. the trail through the jungle when out of the darkness the cat would emerge charging straight at them with the local villagers running for their lives and in their panic they began to trip over one another oh, see, dropping the torches yeah, to what, the jungle that's what y'all get that's what y'all get. Why did you come to this dumbass mission? Jungle floor. And in the chaos, oh, Corbett would take multiple shots at the leopard. Are you looking at me? And killing it. Stand on he business. That's on. what I'm talking about. Come on, man. Come on, now. Jim is, he's the guy to do the job. On to write in his book that if the locals had not fallen down and tripped over each other, Jim he would have been no left games. standing there in the complete darkness, and the cat might have been the one walking away instead of him. Number 1. The Devil of India This is the single deadliest animal to have ever lived, and would make one hunter an absolute legend. The Devil of India was a Bengal tigress responsible for an estimated 436. Oh my god. Body counts of Riley Reed, Tiana Trump, everybody combined. Every star you can think of. Six deaths, which she acquired in Nepal and the Kumal Division in India from the late 19th and early 20th century. The Tigress was even entered into the Guinness Half Book of World Records for holding the largest number of fatalities by a single animal. The Damn. killings first began in western Nepal, where the villagers were tormented Adam and eaten girl. for three long years. Hunters would eventually be sent in to track the animal down. But she would Wait, hold up. This nigga not doing shit. Years. Hunters would have- Yo, get him out. He's blind. Oh, and this one isn't even like- He, he has wood- Wood fucking poles as legs and arms. Eventually be sent in- What are they doing? Track the animal down. But They're she dead. would prove to be too elusive. Eventually, the Nepalese army was called Six in, and they would succeed in scaring her away, forcing her across the border and into India, where she would continue to hunt for humans in oh, the- Oh, nah, yes, yeah, you know, you know they did that on purpose. Kumal district, rotating her kills between multiple villages, are picking anyone off who would venture into the woods. And since all the kills were done in broad daylight, this would leave the villagers completely paralyzed with fear, preventing mm. them from working and leaving their homes. This nightmare would last for a dreadfully long four years, but eventually a handsome reward would be offered to any man who could manage to kill the beast. Okay. Many well-known and famous hunters would attempt this broad task, daylight. but would all return home with a taste of defeat. But in 1907, a young and unknown 31-year-old hunter would take this challenge on for himself. And surprisingly, he would refuse the money. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Is it Jim? Is it Jim? Is it Jim? Is it Jim? Let's see. As he accepted the task simply to help. He would begin this hunt with a four-day trip on foot through the dense jungle be before reaching the town gym. where the animal was last seen. On arrival, he would be shocked to discover a ghost town since everyone was locked inside of their homes, with too. the locals claiming that the animal ah! was roaring in the nearby jungle for the last few days. The young hunter would then proceed to the site where the last victim was taken, discovering nothing but a few of the victim's bones. Oh. While investigating, word of a fight. new attack Ew. reached the village. It was from the neighboring town. The hunter quickly set out on foot once again, but by the time he reached the town, he would discover that a newer attack had just taken place. He would reach the new attack Damn, site and began to follow the- he's hopping and hopping and hopping. Trail of blood, seeing me. nothing like but a small zone. glimpse of the tigress on the horizon. But he was forced to abandon the pursuit, since nightfall was but moments away. The following morning, the hunter came up with a plan. He instructed the villagers to make loud noises by screaming and banging pots. As he began to walk through the dense jungle and working his way to the grasslands at Final the edge Pokemon of the forest, boss. the villagers would begin to make noise too soon. The hunter was left with no choice but to run as fast as he could through the dense jungle, slipping oh. and falling on rocks and roots, trying oh no. his best to get to the edge oh of no. the forest before the beast. Once he finally arrived and out of breath, he feared that he might have missed her. He waited for a moment, catching his breath, and she appeared. Walking out of the forest like he predicted. Oh, that's an easy shot. He would ready his rifle. That's an easy shot right there. Look at this. Rifle easy and shot. take the shot. Wounding the animal on the back leg. As the giant cat began to climb over a rock, the hunter took his second shot and easy missed. Shot. 
with the cat over the rock and out of oh. sight, the only option left was to track her down. Oh, yeah, it's gonna bleed Once out, he climbed though. over the rock to see where the animal Back had road. gone, she would instantly appear standing on top of another rock where she would begin to charge him head on. And in that instant, the hunter would let off his third shot, sending the animal from a complete charge to collapsing onto the floor. Oh my God, that actually looked, that's a, f that's a f monster. It's like an arc survival creature. Laying on the grass, she would take her last and final breath. Upon inspecting the body, the hunter found that the tiger's top and bottom jaw See were completely ya. broken. <laughs> a hunter long ago, before she was ever a man-eater, attempted to, to kill gym. her for I sport, want gym. permanently injuring her, preventing the animal from hunting and eating her natural prey, resulting in her having to resort to eating humans as a means of survival. But it. after seven long years and devouring grass, over 430 people, the nightmare would now come to an end. The people from countless villages would finally have true peace and their normal lives returned to them. And for the young hunter who killed the beast, he would go down in history as one of the most prolific hunters to have ever lived. He would be remembered for generations and would even have the first national park in India named oh, wow. in his honor. This 31 year old unknown hunter was no one other than Jim Corbett. Let's go! Jim is the guy. You need some shit done. You need it handled. Get Jim. This is an emotional video. I've fallen in love with this man. Oh, man, that was a good video, man. Jim. Yo, for next year, y'all, get your costumes prepared. We're all dressing up as Jim. We're all dressing up as Jim. God damn. This makes me want to hunt some shit. Like, I want to go down in history like this. Good God, Jim. Good video.